Ever wondered how hackers infiltrate secure systems and steal sensitive data? Let's start by debunking a common myth. Hacking isn't always about breaking into systems with malicious intent. Instead, it often involves understanding these systems in depth, knowing their weaknesses, and exploring their potential. It's a race against time and technology, a puzzle-solving exercise that requires creativity, analytical thinking, and a deep understanding of the digital world. We often picture hackers as shadowy figures, hidden behind screens typing away in a language we don't understand. But what if I told you that hacking is more than that? What if hacking is about comprehension, about speaking the language of computers and networks, about using tools that help unravel the complex tapestry of codes and protocols? Today, we're going to dive into the world of hacking, the languages and tools that make it possible. Prepare yourself for a journey into the intriguing and often misunderstood realm of hacking. The first step to hacking is understanding its language. Now when we say hacking language, we're not talking about some secret cryptic communication used only by hackers. We're referring to the programming languages that are the backbone of many hacking activities. Different tasks require different languages, and understanding this is crucial to getting a grip on hacking. Let's break down a few key languages. First up we have Python. Python is like the Swiss army knife of hacking languages. It's simple, versatile, and powerful. It's often used for automation, which is a big part of hacking. Automation can help carry out repetitive tasks quickly and efficiently, freeing up a hacker's time for more complex activities. Python's user-friendly syntax and extensive libraries make it a go-to language for many hackers. Next, we have JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is the language of the web, most websites use JavaScript in one form or another. This makes it an invaluable tool for web hacking. With JavaScript, a hacker can exploit vulnerabilities in web applications, manipulate web pages, and perform other web-related hacks. Then there's C++. This is where things get a bit more serious. C++ is a high-level language that's often used for creating viruses and malware. It's powerful and flexible, capable of directly interacting with hardware or system resources. This makes it ideal for creating the kind of software that can infiltrate systems and wreak havoc. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. These languages can be used to unlock many systems and reveal vulnerabilities. They can help secure networks, protect data, and improve software. But if used irresponsibly, they can also cause a lot of damage. So, if you're planning to dive into the world of hacking, make sure you understand the language you're using. And more importantly, make sure you're using it responsibly. Remember, these languages are the key to unlock many systems, but they can also lock up hackers if used irresponsibly. Now that you know the languages, what are the tools in a hacker's toolbox? Well, let's dive right in. First off, we have Wireshark, an open source tool that's been the go-to choice for network protocol analysis for years. It's like a digital microscope for your network, allowing you to inspect data packets in real time and at a microscopic level. It's an indispensable tool for diagnosing network problems and testing security vulnerabilities. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Next up is Metasploit, a powerhouse for penetration testing. It's a whole framework designed to find vulnerabilities and manage security assessments. It's not just a tool, it's a platform, with a range of tools bundled together. Metasploit allows for the simulation of real-world attacks on your network to identify weak points and potential security breaches. But like any powerful tool, it can be used for good or ill. So always remember the ethical guidelines we've discussed. Finally, we have Burp Suite, the Swiss Army knife for web application security testing. It's a toolkit that allows you to perform various tasks from initial mapping to analysis of an application's attack surface. It can automatically crawl content and functionality, analyze application data and process, and even perform advanced exploitation techniques. But the key here is to use it responsibly, to strengthen security, not to exploit vulnerabilities for personal gain. These are just a few of the many tools available in a hacker's toolbox. Each one has its unique benefits and uses, and mastering them requires time, patience, and a solid understanding of the underlying principles. They are powerful tools, capable of both protecting and disrupting digital infrastructure. Remember, it's not the tools themselves that are inherently good or bad, but how they are used. They can be used to find and fix weaknesses, making our digital world safer, or they can be used to exploit those weaknesses, causing harm and chaos. These tools, 
when used ethically, can help identify vulnerabilities and strengthen security. So let's use them wisely, shall we? So, what separates a criminal hacker from an ethical one? This question leads us into the intriguing world of ethical hacking. Ethical hacking, sometimes known as white hat hacking, is the practice of testing and probing a system's defenses, not for malicious intent, but rather to identify vulnerabilities. Think of ethical hackers as digital locksmiths. They use their skills to ensure that a system's locks and bolts are secure and can withstand attacks from the outside. Just like a locksmith would test a lock to ensure it cannot be easily picked, an ethical hacker tests digital systems to ensure they can't be easily breached. The purpose of ethical hacking is not to exploit these vulnerabilities, but to bring them to light so they can be fixed. This concept is vital in our increasingly digital world, where sensitive information is stored in databases and servers. From personal data to financial information, hackers who mean harm are always on the prowl. Here's where ethical hackers step in. They help businesses and organizations stay one step ahead, securing their systems and data from these potential attacks. But how does ethical hacking differ from malicious or black hat hacking? The difference lies in the intent and the permission. Ethical hackers operate with permission from the system owners, with the goal of improving the system's security. In contrast, malicious hackers operate without permission, with the aim of exploiting vulnerabilities for personal gain or to cause harm. Ethical hackers, like their malicious counterparts, use various tools and languages. However, they use their knowledge and skills to protect and improve, not to exploit and harm. They help to build a more secure digital world, where our personal and sensitive information is safe. It's important to remember that ethical hacking is a profession governed by rules and codes of conduct. Ethical hackers are responsible, accountable professionals who use their skills and knowledge to make our digital spaces safer and more secure. Becoming an ethical hacker means using your skills for good, to protect and secure, not to harm. Together we can build a safer digital world, one hack at a time. To wrap up, what are the key points to remember from this discussion? First, we dove into the realm of hacking languages. We learned that many languages are used in hacking, each with its own strengths and applications. Python, with its ease of use and extensive libraries, is often the first choice for creating scripts and automating tasks. C and C++, on the other hand, offer low-level access to system resources, making them critical for exploits and system-level programming. Other languages like JavaScript, PHP, and SQL also play significant roles, especially when dealing with web and database vulnerabilities. Moving on, we discussed the tools of the trade. We learned that hacking isn't just about coding, it's about using the right tools for the job. Tools like Nmap for network scanning, Wireshark for packet analysis, and Metasploit for penetration testing are vital in a hacker's toolkit. We also talked about more specialized tools like Aircrack Ng for wireless attacks and John the Ripper for password cracking. Each tool has its own role and knowing when and how to use them is a key part of hacking. Then we took a deep dive into ethical hacking. We emphasized that hacking isn't inherently bad, in fact it's a powerful tool for good when used ethically. Ethical hackers, also known as white hat hackers, use their skills to find and fix vulnerabilities, making systems more secure. They operate within legal boundaries and always have permission before testing any systems. Finally, we touched on the role of ethical hacking in cybersecurity. With the increasing reliance on digital infrastructure, the demand for ethical hackers is higher than ever. By finding and fixing vulnerabilities before malicious hackers can exploit them, ethical hackers play a crucial role in protecting our digital world. Armed with this knowledge, always remember the power of hacking comes with great responsibility. Use it wisely, use it well. As we close, remember that hacking isn't inherently bad or good. It's like a double-edged sword, with its potential either to protect or to cause harm, all depending on how it's wielded. The languages and tools we've discussed today are not just designed for illicit activities. They can also serve as shields protecting our digital world from those who seek to exploit it. Ethical hackers, sometimes referred to as white hat hackers, use these same tools and languages to safeguard our digital universe. They're the silent guardians, the unseen protectors of our online communities, and you too can join their ranks. With the knowledge and skills you've gained from this video, you're one step closer to making a positive impact in the world of cybersecurity. So, continue to learn, continue to grow, and remember, with great power comes great responsibility. In the world of cybersecurity, you could be the hero or the villain. The choice lies in your hands.